the link in here or the poster in here I, or something i put the links to inclusion on um linkedin so if you follow us on linkedin we'll be posting all of those forum links up there yeah um, oh, i've also shared it on facebook as well uh, I also have an LSA group where I have shared it with a lot, a lot of, I, we have over 500 LSAs on those group and we've shared it with uh, them. We usually get an attendance of between 120 to 170 LSAs. That's how badly this support is needed. And they're so, so good at asking and, and, and you know, for uh, coming on, they're not really good at asking questions because I think a lot of them are shy, but they always come on to listen and so open to learning. Yeah, they really are. And um, the, the ones who have been presenting have gotten so confident, they're really sharing practice with all the others. And it's really valuable, very valuable. So please do share that with all of your LSAs if you feel it's valuable enough. Right. And we also, sorry, we also have the LSA uh, newsletter, which is basically focused on LSA friendly material. Uh, we talk about uh, even the poster for the forum is on there. And we also put in some good reading material for them. Um, so if you need to uh, have uh, your LSAs join that, uh, if they want a copy of it, please let us know. We are always happy to help. Pop a, pop a message and we, and we can add you to those newsletter um, the forum newsletter, if you pop an email to forum at inclusion.com and I'll put that on the, the chat. Um, in terms of transitioning students, Miss Susie, have you got any further advice for, let's say, our high students who have high emotional needs in terms of transition? What, how can we support them? Yes, I have already started that and have that conversation with the heads of yours. Wherever we had the learning managers the same for next year, or the class teachers, we have had this conversation and it's going to go from now till end of June across the school. So it does take time. But um, as we are the first year completed after COVID, it was very important to speak about safeguard, child protection, as well as uh, mental health. So of course, not in detail, but just to say it was uh, to handle with care. So I would say, for example, Catherine O'Farrell, handle with care. So they would know that, okay, next year I'm having someone who is a little bit compromised and that we needed to put something in place. But there's something in place. We can, if it is a safe place, we would decide what it is and how to give more pastoral care so that we can wean off the person from our register also, because that's the whole point. Huh? So yes, absolutely. And then we have overlapping. We have children who are um, with the students of determination as well as on mental health. So you know that we have ADHD or we have uh, OCD or we have uh, children who are on the spectrum, uh, same thing. So we would be working both departments together in order to make sure that we give the whole idea or picture to the next year group. So they are aware it doesn't become like, it's your problem because it's your child because he's on your register. That's the one thing we really want to fight here. And I'm sure uh, Harmeet and Catherine would uh, agree with me. It's not our children. It's our all. So it's the it's the school, the principal, every teacher who is in touch with, which should all be aware of what the trigger points are and what are the soothing points too. So that's important to add because some people, some teachers, sometimes Arabic department, uh, PE department, they would give uh, treats. I would say, you don't know if they're allergic or not. So you can give something else than treats. And we just need to make sure that they're aware of what are they sensitive to. So I have one child who is now 15, going to be 16, and he loves a pen. So we promised him a pen at term, term wise. So he needs to do certain things to gain that pen. It's really a 10 dirham pen, but it's for him a big deal. Yeah, and sometimes it's the small things, isn't it? It's those small yeah. little incentives that can, and information like that can really help the teacher to break the barrier through to those children. Yeah. So, those transition plans are really also for friendship. Also for friendship, as you said, Catherine. What are they? What are, they don't like doing, uh, um, to be near loud people or this or that. So that helps too. Yeah, yeah. It's really vital information, and it's that kind of pastoral information that really um, can really smooth a child's transition from one to the other. And especially going from a primary to a secondary. If you're an all through school. There's often a disconnect, so it's really important that the centers from both sections come together and really make sure that that plan is there. 
because even for a typical student, it's a huge change going from primary to secondary, especially if you're moving classrooms, you have lots of teachers and you don't have that anchor of a homeroom teacher that who you would have been used to. It's really vital that they, those students know they have somebody to go to and that could be their same code, that could be their same teacher, somebody who they can identify with amidst all that change and that sea of, of, of kind of, it, it's, it is like a rough sea when you enter into secondary school. Um, so, yeah, go on, Susan. Yeah. So what I've also done, you're right, is that we have already given a mentor for those who are on the spectrum. We have given them the mentor. So it may not be the head of year. It may, it may be one of the teachers, but they are aware that that's the teacher who I need to go if there is anything that happens. Or this is the email. And we put that in their pack. So exactly like Catherine said, especially when you go from six to seven, that's part of their uh, transition pack. And with the picture and the email already agreed so they can already exchange mails during summer regarding holidays or whatever just to get that connection going yeah it makes it a lot less scary doesn't it when you know where you who you can go to okay right so once we've done we've serviced our students and we know our students are ready to go and ready to move it's time at the head of inclusion or a SENCO, a VP, principal, whatever, you, if you're in a leadership role for inclusion or well-being, we need to reflect in and look at our own staffing. And that includes our SEN teachers, our counsellors, our well-being practitioners, our LSAs, anybody who's involved in the SEN key inclusion team. It's useful to carry out a full review. If you're monitoring your team with KPIs, that's key performance indicators, they, these are kind of the, um, the, the strategies or the, the expectations you have for your inclusion team. It's good to talk about them and how they feel they have done over the course of the year. Asking your team what has worked and what hasn't. Very often as a head of inclusion, you get so caught up in the running of, of, a, of a department you don't have time to reflect on your view. So it's important that you, I'm going to see you. Yeah, it's important that you take the time to ask the team. Okay, so questions to ask your team when you're doing your full review. Do you feel clear about your role? Because oftentimes our, our roles will evolve and change throughout the course of the, the, the review or of the year that's, that's gone. So ask people, do they feel clear about their role and do they feel confident about their duties? Um, ask your team, are they monitoring their own success? So we get very focused on students, but let's look at our team as well. And overall, the, the, um, how productive they feel they've been and where they feel they've made a real impact and how we can celebrate that. Talk to them about what CPD they would like to do for the next year. And if any of them want to develop certain skills, if you know that you've got a really challenging, um, a student who is really challenging needs coming, are, are your team ready for that? And if they're not, can we do something over the, the course of the summer to prepare? Are there some qualifications we can get to prepare? Um, asking your team, what would they change about their own role if they could? That's a really valuable one because that will give you insights as to where you can really grow and change your practice and your team. Asking them what activities they feel were the most effective and how you could build on those and what activities they think weren't the least effective. So these are all really useful um, pieces of information to know for your team in planning for the next year ahead. My apologies. Okay, the screen share isn't loading. Can you okay. restart the screen share? Somebody is saying. Although oh. I can see it. Yeah, it should be there. Can too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nancy and Lillian. But Are I you seeing the screen perhaps... share now? I'm uh I'm having trouble seeing it too. Could you please uh, just restart it? Okay, then if, but if some people can see it, then it, it must be a connection on your own side. Even if one other person can see it, it's generally a connection from your own side. But in any case, guys, we're recording everything, so you will be able to access them from our YouTube channel, which we will share. 
Um, okay, can you see Harmeet and Susie? You can see it? Everybody else? All okay? Super, thank you very much. All right, then. so moving on then from all of, once you've done your KPI review with your team, you've triangulated all your data, you've transitioned your students, you need to look to your action plan. And this can be either a very long process or a very short process. If you've got a robust action plan, this shouldn't take too long. I use um, the process of, uh, it's called RAG rating, red, amber, or green. So you take each of your um, action plan tasks and rate it, whether it's been not done at all, red, amber, it's under process still, or green, it's completed. Literally with a highlighter, just highlight what you've achieved and what needs to still be done. Um, and this is really vitally important for uh, planning for your next year. This will inform your set and your whole school set. So your inclusion action plan will be very detailed for you, but you will take the key action points, maybe three or four of them that are as a priority and use those to in, um, inform your whole school SIP. So graduating your action plan is really important to keep you on track. Uh, as I was saying then, this will go to inform your SEP. So very often we find that the SEP the school is the self-evaluation form that's often left to the last minute on coming up to inspection. If you do that, it can make your life really difficult because it's a huge document, it's very detailed, and it takes a long time to compile. But if you review your set termly or even more often than that, it saves you this big burden of, of, of um, responsibility at one key point in every year. Keep it up to date and keep reviewing it and it becomes an active, useful document. The set shouldn't be something that you just pull out during inspection. It should be something that's informing your process and your, um, your activities throughout the year, like an action plan. They should be cyclical, feeding in from your inclusion action plan to your school improvement plan to your school self evaluate the form. They should all be feeding into each other all the time, informing each other and um, being informed by each other. And finally, almost finally, we need to update the regulators portals. So KHDA and um, ESIS for ADA, um, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. At the moment, Sharjah don't have any uploads that you need to do at the end of year for inclusion specifically, nor do the other MRs. But for these two, it's worthwhile doing your review at the end of the year so that you're fully prepared for next year and you're not facing a burden of data to be monitoring in September. And to conclude, don't forget to reward your team. I know pretty much every head of inclusion I know, they do this anyway. You don't need to be reminded, but it's useful. Don't underestimate the power of a certificate. Can I just say one thing, Catherine? Someone is yeah. uh, really um, disturbing uh, here because they, they've used my name to write to everybody, something quite annoying. Oh. It's very immature, very immature. And it's very sad because in our four years, we never had this. No, we've never had this. And I wonder where the... Um... I think we need to review the, the give the command uh, to others or what. Uh, yeah, so it says, in... yeah, that's right, Susie. It's, and it's got a bad very word. Very yeah. Yeah, 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 language in there. Person. They don't um, find this interesting. I feel that that person should leave this because it's quite important what we're doing here. And we are giving our own time for the community and um, we have better things to do. I can play with my grandson who is here than to spend my time with these people who are not interested. I would imagine that this is um, a, a student because no adult would behave like this. So I've made you two co-hosts as well. So if you can find them, FH. Oh, they've actually taken your ID, Susie. Oh, yeah. I don't know how they do that. Okay. Right. That's, we'll have to perhaps look at how we will monitor that moving forward. But we're almost finished anyway, so we, we can close up. Um, okay, so final, final words are about rewarding the team, 
broaden your CAs, your shadows, your support staff, and yourself as a head of inclusion for our head of wellbeing counsellor, whatever role you have on your team, rewarding yourself for a job well done because it's not an easy role, as we all know. It's quite challenging, but it's very rewarding. Um, and that is pretty much it for our forum for today. My apologies to everyone for the disturbance. Uh, Ms. Breezy and Ms. Hamid, have you guys got anything that you would like to add? Um, no, I think you've covered everything. The 